Alrighty, what's up team? Um, did, did I just say team? We are currently under a winter storm warning, so I'm drinking out of my snowflake mug, which I have been for some time. I get kind of excited about snow and any small chance for some snow. This is going to be fun. This is going to be like a whole drugstore get ready with me, um, but I'm going to incorporate some different drugstore gift sets as well. I just thought this would be a great way to show a lot of different things all at once, so I'm going to jump right in because there's a lot to talk about. The first thing um, was something that just recently got unboxed here from Physicians Formula. It is a $60 retail value, although I don't know the actual price off the top of my head, but it's called Essential Minis. I took a couple of the first things out that come in here. You get a rosé all-day oil-free serum, you get a spotlight primer, a highlight mascara, and one of those healthy lip liquid lipsticks. So I thought, hey, let's work this stuff into the look. Um, we've got a serum and a primer. I was thinking this was more of like a primer. It's kind of, whoa, uh, things got drippy. It's kind of iridescent colored, very fragrant with the rosy scent. If you're sensitive to fragrances, watch out for that. But this is supposed to be just an oil-free serum. So I've already moisturized and everything. I'm not sure if this is literally one of those serums that's supposed to go on your skin first, but I was thinking it was more of like a primer serum type thing. Now that it's sinking into the skin, Things are just feeling a little bit smoother, so I guess maybe that wasn't a huge texture changer there. Now we have some Spotlight Illuminating Primer, so we're gonna try that on. Um, these are just a couple of things that I haven't really played with a lot off the bat. So I apologize for not having more info here, but I am gonna keep using them. You gotta prime the pump a bit. I thought that was going to be one of those instances where, you know, it finally does come out and it shoots across the room. Okay, um, this is a real champagne-y color. Let's see how potent the highlighter nature of this is. Ooh, it's got a nice smoothness. Kind of a barely there scent on this. I don't feel like they intentionally were scenting it as something. I did probably two pumps here, which is perhaps more than was necessary. But the glow here is definitely visible and it doesn't have too much of a tacky feel. So if you've used some glowy primers that you felt were too sticky for your skin, or just added more moisture than you would want. This one doesn't seem to be like over the top hydrating. So so that's going to be good because the foundation I'm using, I never really used a super hydrating primer underneath. I'd been using my Farsali Skin Tune Blur. But we're going to jump into the entire Candid line here from Revlon. I have been experimenting with this for about a week and a half. I really know what I think about it now. This was sent to me in a little PR package and this is the little memo that came with it. The whole message behind this range is that um, Photo Ready Candid is formulated to protect skin by adding antioxidant, anti-pollutant, and anti-blue light ingredients and took out ingredients like parabens, phthalates, artificial fragrances, artificial dyes, and oils. It's said to be creamy, moisturizing, and buildable to give you an impeccable finish. They've got 31 shades of foundation, 17 shades of concealer, and three translucent powders. So the uh, foundation shade where I fall is 240 Natural Beige. And we've got kind of like an IT Cosmetic CC Cream style packaging here. I feel like you're not getting a ton. You are getting less than a fluid ounce. Um, uh, one fluid ounce seems to be pretty standard for a lot of products, but this is 0.75. And just in case you were wondering, if you do get IT Cosmetics, you get 1.08 fluid ounces. But it does have a pump, which I like. So I end up using on this a full pump. A full pump seems to be plenty. And I just get this dabbed all over my skin. Texture-wise, it does feel a lot like a traditional liquid foundation, but there's a little bit more of, um, I, I don't want to say gel-like, but there's something about this formula that's hanging together a little bit more, like the touch of it feels not more um, slimy, but it's like it's just holding together more on the skin. I'm going to use my F84 from Sigma to blend this in, and I want you to see what this is doing coverage-wise. Again, this is just one full pump, and I'm getting, I think, a solid medium coverage out of this. Now, it does claim to be buildable, um, but I think even the many times that I have built this up a little bit more, it's still not like a tremendously full coverage product. So for some people, you do want the full coverage. Other people don't. I'm not going to say whether this is a good news situation or a bad news situation. It just doesn't happen to be a full coverage foundation in my eyes. On my skin, really full coverage makeup tends to have 
a bit more of an impact on the under eye area. May come like 95% close to covering up any melasma out here. A full coverage foundation will cover up redness, cover up freckles. The only one of those things that this is really doing is it seems to take care of the redness around the nose. And I'm not saying it did nothing because it very nicely evened out the whole complexion, but it's just more of a medium coverage look here. And you are going to rely, I think, on some concealer after you got the foundation on to take care of some of those other little problem areas. But there's a really nice smoothness that comes over the skin. It kind of reminds me of the effect I get um, after putting on the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Foundation. You get this kind of natural matte effect all over the skin and then you touch your face and it feels awfully lightweight but very very smooth. I think there's probably a little more moisture, a little more feeling of hydration on the skin from this foundation than the Revolution one. But moving on to the concealer, I've got it in light and this is the kind of fascinating thing here. It looks so yellow. As I dot this on my skin, I mean it looks like a flat out like banana yellow colored concealer, but somehow when I start blending this in on the skin, it really, th that yellow nature of this product doesn't show that much. And what that's telling me is that this is not a particularly super huge coverage concealer either. You know what I'm saying? Like if this were really tremendous coverage, that yellow would still be I think very apparent even after I get this blended in, but my skin won't really have a yellowy tone after I work this in. It's kind of one of those things that, okay, it helps my under eye. It's not a total miracle worker, but it does a decent job. And yellow can be a super brightening and sometimes neutralizing type tone, but I was just shocked that it didn't go on to have a real yellowy look once I blended it in. So even after putting that on, I can still see a little under eye. I can still see a little melasma if I'm looking closely, but this all in all is a lighter look, you know what I'm saying? This duo ends up being, you know, lighter than a lot of the super full coverage foundations out there, but it still looks good on the skin, and staying power has been really good for me. Now keep in mind I'm testing this during a time when I'm really not sweating a whole lot. Don't get me wrong, I've still put it through some really long days of wear and not touching it up at all, but I just don't get very greasy with this. Um, like my NARS Natural Radiant Long Wear, I will sometimes notice that. Even in these drier months, I will still notice around my nose just getting a little more shiny, um, overall decent staying power with that too, but I notice it more on the skin. This keeps its matteness and its presence on my skin pretty well all day. And overall, I have a normal skin type that's starting to verge on a little bit dry. Just in this past week and a half, I've noticed the dryness creeping in, but we're going to use a little bit of this powder now, and I really like the packaging on this. I have this in the shade 001. I'm not sure what color that translates to, but it comes in three shades. And it's got a little sifter cap here, so you can just pop that over open and feel free to, you know, travel with this and not think that your powder is going to be shaking out all over the place. It does really take some shaking and tapping to get it into the cap. You know the old shake and tap. So I'm going to pick some of this up with my um, e.l.f. small tapered brush. I'm sorry, how could I forget your name? Dabbing this on the under eye to set it, although that concealer is a little tacky but not terrible. But I just feel like the extra matteness from this powder makes everything look a little more flawless. And then tap a little extra into the cap and I'm going to pick that up with my larger brush, my um, e.l.f. complexion brush, and just gently, lightly set the rest of the face. Everything was already looking decently matte, but now it all feels just a little smoother, a little more locked in, and I think setting it probably has helped the staying power because usually that is the case for me. When I set stuff, it lasts better, lasts longer. Next, we're going to bust out something new here from LA Colors. They've got these, what do they call them, beauty booklets, and they're just these little palettes. They've got a couple different tones for blush, a couple for highlight. I've pulled out and kind of been playing with the ones that I thought were best for me. There's this highlight and bronzer palette, and then there's one that's even more like goldeny. But I will tell you, everything in here's got some shimmer. So we bounce into that bronzer and it's got a little sheen and sort of a coppery color and I don't totally hate it, but it's just something to be ready for. Like I'm not fully in love with this product. Once that gets blended into the skin, it looks kind of natural, but at first you're like, whoa, hello. I'm going to use that very lightly, kind of just as a true bronzer where the sun might hit because it's got just a little red in it. So it makes me think of like that natural, more sun-kissed look. Now the blush palette I do like better. This is the one called Getting Gorgeous and it's the little bit deeper of the two actually. We've got a real rosy wine color, a little bit more coppery shade, this pinky color, this borderline highlight, and then a matte rosy shade here. We're gonna go to that one first. 
and I like this color very much. I think it's super wearable. Really nice depth of color, a nice pigmentation level to where I'm not really scared to use it, but yet it can deliver, you know what I'm saying? Have you guys seen these little books being sold anywhere? Because so far I've just seen them on the LA Colors website. I mean, they are fairly new, but let me know what stores you've actually found them in. Some people find this brand in like Family Dollar, Dollar General. Um, I was in Dollar General not that long ago and I didn't see them yet. I'm gonna give myself a little pop of this rich shade because you know I'm not scared. I'm going slightly lower on the cheek with that. A little added richness. Never hurt anybody. And then what happens if you just pop a little pink on top? Well, I will show you. Very brightening. To me, that kind of functions like a highlight right there on the apple of the cheek. Because there's a swatch, friends. I mean, that is light. I also want to highlight with this thing because I have been such a fan of the Mineral Glow Pearls from Physician's Formula. This is like a classic product that has been around a long time in their line, but you're getting a mini one here. Let's see if this lives up to the usual full-size experience. I would say so. It seems like there's a little bit more fine sparkle in this than I remember. When you buff it into the skin, it completely makes a difference with this because you can see anything dusty about this kind of goes airborne. It was interesting how once we got that foundation on, like, the illuminating primer didn't have a ton of... I don't know, show through, and I think that's just the coverage and the mattifying nature of the foundation. Because I was kind of looking for it, and I've been using that foundation a lot with a non-illuminating primer, and it still kind of had the same look on my skin, you know, just a semi-matte type deal. Okay, I'm feeling good about this, yes. Next I'm gonna do a little bit of a setting spray. This isn't really new to me, I use it a ton. It's my Hyaluronic Fix from Makeup Revolution. Yeah, I've started adding in a fifth spray. You should know. It's one of those mists where I can see an instant impact from it. I feel like it actually made that highlight look even more natural once this came in contact with it. I also don't really have anything new for brows. I mean, I've been using my Dalton 3-in-1 uh, brow product, which I think is brilliant, but it's not drugstore, so I'm going back to my e.l.f. today. My little e.l.f. brow pencil, which I love. Two dollars. Just evening out the brows a bit. This has a little spoolie on the other side. It's not a super skinny pencil. It's kind of in between. It's not real thick. It's not shaped funny, but it is retractable so you won't need to be sharpening. So last night, Mom and I, with Dad's help as well, made six big pans of our family Chex Mix. It's a tradition. Mom said it actually goes back to her grandma making it, um, and we make little tweaks and adjustments, you know, because we normally make it right before Christmas, but this batch we're making before Thanksgiving, and we did like a pumpkin spice theme. We added some different pumpkin spice type cereals, some different flavorings, and then we've got a really special plan for Christmas time to totally flip it and do something different. But it is quite a process. Like, it's not just stirring stuff up, but it bakes, and there's like an oil mixture that you put in with it. It's serious stuff here, and it makes a lot. And so mom will give that to some people, or you know, just put it out at family gatherings and whatnot. We'll see how the pumpkin spice version goes over. It's not gonna knock people over because I didn't want people who like really don't love pumpkin to be like, oh my gosh, so much pumpkin, but it's got some subtle notes and we've vlogged it. Hopefully did a complete enough job of vlogging this, but I'll have the whole recipe and everything in the info box of my next vlog so you can see that. So I just fill in like I always do, then kind of brush it through, and then I use my L'Oreal Brow Stylist Boost and Set. When's this thing gonna run out? And this just helps with the hold, helps with the evenness of color a little bit too, but mainly it's hold. Next drugstore set that I'm gonna be incorporating is the Rosé All Day from Hard Candy. Now I did a super glam look with this set over the weekend for a special event. Showed this in my last vlog. Um, a lot of people seem to enjoy that look. I'm probably gonna do something kind of similar to that to show you how I recreated it because it comes with this little nine color palette and you also get an eye primer. Thank you very much. Not enough kits are including eye primers. There's a cashmere silk lip color. There is a metal glaze 12 hour intense liquid foil and then also a rose gold highlighter, which yes, I was wearing this in that look. I did not work any of the liquid shadow into the look. But guys, the rose gold eyes is just a snippet of this larger palette, which I 
did not really think I was enjoying this a whole lot. But now having a decent experience with this, I'm wondering, should I just be giving this more of a shot? But I never felt like I was having great luck with that larger hard candy palette, but then this one ended up working out so well. But I did do kind of a special step on my lids with some concealer, just because I wanted a really pop and bright lid color. Because some of these lighter shades can be a little bit on the flaky side texture wise. So you kind of got to keep that in mind when you're laying these down on the lid. But I've got my primer on. Um, the primer was really nice. It's very smooth. It's not super tacky though. And frankly, I think some of these shadows could use a little tackiness. I'll take out my sponge tip. And I'm going to go straight to this shade, which makes a great mid-tone color in the crease. It's a lot like Prayer from the Once palette. I gave y'all a little Once update in my last vlog too, but hopefully back soon. From what I've just been told, it's sort of up to Ulta now as to how soon they want to get that going on their website because thousands of palettes have gone through a quality control inspection and everything's good and kind of ready and waiting. So we got that shade going in the crease. Then I'm going to go to the pink, which this was a shade I kind of added later in my first look with this. This kind of deepens the crease a little bit, even though it looks like a brighter shade, like it just adds a little more color intensity. So just kind of overlapping the mauve. But yeah, this little palette is really making me want to give the bigger palette another chance. We've got this matte beigey shade here. And then I'll do a little bit of the shimmer. These are just a little more finicky. It just kind of gets really flaky going across the skin. I'm going to go for a really bold, shiny lid. So I'm going to start off with a little concealer, just a dab of pretty much any concealer, sort of toward the inner part of your eyelid, and then take a flat brush and just kind of get that smoothed around. We want to really give this shadow something to cling to. Then we're taking out another flat brush and I'm going to go into this center shade that's kind of pinky. I'm just going to start layering this up on my lids. You got to do a little building, but by the end of it, I mean, the look turned out so good. It's just one of those situations where you're going to be frustrated with the shadows a little bit going through the process, but in the end, you kind of love them. These shadows are kind of like children. Another notification about the winter storm warning. Oh, it goes from 3 p.m. today until 6 p.m. tomorrow. All right. Noted. Then I go into this shade. This is really kind of like a rich pink with golden sheen. It's sort of a unique color, not quite as flaky as the lighter shades. And I just sort of overlapped the light shade with this. Gives us a bit more of a pinky look to our lids now. And then we're going to take this burgundy, which is a little different texture than everything else. This is more just like a, like a smoother metallic finish shadow. And I'm going to deepen up my outer corner with that. And I'm also going to use that shade with like my Sigma E25 brush. And that's really going to kick us up a notch depth wise in our outer corner. I'm really just kind of using the shape of this brush. You know, this brush has a, just a little bit of a width to it and putting it right there in the outer corner and letting that kind of shape the distance of shadow, how it's coming out here from the outer edge and then just pulling inward like so. Then I am going to blend that edge. I'm taking a little bit of this white shimmer or like kind of champagne shimmer and dabbing that around the inner corner. And when I did put the concealer on, I got it down in that general zone. And then we'll use some black, matte black over here. And that's what really just, I don't know, provides so much contrast and extra intensity to the outer corner. I'm using my flat brush to kind of dab it in and then I'll take a smaller, like outer corner type brush to blend it around. I'm going to do that on both sides. I like the way this black kind of plays with the rich reddish colors in this look. So then with no additional product on my brush, I'm using like little circular motions, outer corner, and letting that black kind of just blend into that big reddish outer V that I made. And then a couple things we're going to do, we're going to go back with the E25, a little bit of that red again, reinforce the red, and then dabbing over with this shade, just use your finger 
and let that kind of come over that border where the black is meeting whatever was on your lid. But when I did this really glam look, I felt like I really went light on my lid and it was the contrast of everything that made it look super glamorous. And I am gonna do a little black here going down to the lower lash line with a pencil brush. Keep that to the outer corner. And then I think I'll use this matte mauve working inward. Now also, when I did this look, I went light in my lower inner rim. I just thought it really opened things up. Again, I think it's kind of about contrast. You know, you've got a lot of dark going on. Let's keep the eye big and bright and round. Next up, I'm gonna line with some Milani Stay Put Matte. This is not a really new product, but it is a liner that I love from the drugstore. It's not a pin style, um, but it's still great. It just has tremendous staying power. And I'm just gonna take this across the upper lash line. Kind of rediscovered this stuff on Halloween. I had like different makeup I was doing and like scarecrow stuff on my face. This really lasted well. But even just in an eyeliner since it lasts well also. And we'll do a little bit of a wing here. I believe I did that on Saturday with this look. You kind of got to watch the angle of your wing though and come up high enough to where things aren't looking droopy. Aim high with that wing. Yes. This liner also does an exceptionally good job of going over like a really shimmery lid. You know how some liners kind of lose it? <laughs> They eat up that shadow and just turn dull. Okay, so that is pretty much my eye look. Um, I need to find my lashes because I want to use those same lashes, this, the uh, Coco Soho lashes that I wore with this look before. And those happen to be downstairs on the kitchen counter. I mean, where are your lashes right now? Um, somewhere totally normal, that's nice. But to just sort of expedite this process, I'm going to do my mascara, put the lashes on, and then uh, we'll talk lips. All right, what's up, Rike drop off? Look at this glam. Ooh, I did pop on a little bit of that highlight that's in the Rose All Day kit, and a little extra of the burgundy shadow here on the lower lash line, but other than that, just mascara top and bottom. Um, these are the Coco Soho lashes. They're usually what I pop on when I really wanna make sure I'm doing the most. And then there is a lip color in the rosé kit. I'll pop up a picture of me wearing it. It's just kind of a smooth, sort of soft, barely their rose color. But then I got this larger set of 20 and it's all different finishes from Hard Candy, like matte, demi-matte, shiny, glitter. And I kind of want to choose one of these for this look actually. Now I have found a little bit of inconsistency like across the cashmere silk. Not all of these feel exactly the same. The cashmere silk and the rosé kit, I was like, it just felt like kind of a smooth lip gloss. And then a couple of these felt a little thicker, like they were really clinging to the lips. And then we've got these things called liquid sparklers down here you can put on top. The wet look gloss, I do like the texture of those. Velvet mousse is more just like a liquid lipstick. Let's try the dark cashmere silk and see how that goes because I haven't used this one yet. What's a little annoying to me about this set also is that there are no shade names on any of these. Not on the back, not on the products, and I'm not quite familiar enough with all these lines to know whether or not these are actual colors that they make at all times. Non-limited edition stuff, I'm not sure. This smells like cake batter though. Legit. If you put this under my nose and I close my eyes, I'd say that's Funfetti cake. Definitely sheer. Making me think it's maybe a little bit of a dupe for my Pat McGrath Lip Gloss in Flesh 4. It had the same kind of sheerness to it, kind of your lips, but deeper and shinier look. I'm gonna try to build up the color a little bit, but to me, this is not demi-matte. This, this seems like a straight up gloss. So in the lineup, it's that one. That's the one I use, the cashmere silk, the darkest one in that row. That's a sweet taste, smells absolutely like Funfetti cake, but is shiny just like a lip gloss, so. A lot of different things happening here. Um, this little Physician's Formula Kit, that was where it all started. If you wanna experiment with some more kind of like serum, primer type things, I mean, I think these are kind of fun. I actually really like the texture and the look of that Spotlight Primer on. This is a great highlight in here. I do like the Healthy Lip formula. I know I've talked about that quite a while ago on my channel, but they give you a pretty red in that. I have not yet tried the mascara in there, but that's a nice little kit and it does come with a makeup bag. As far as the Photo Ready Candid line, I mean, I feel like I've got a great 
look on my skin right now. Just even coverage, it doesn't look too thick. We're not getting super full coverage out of it, but just like for an everyday foundation, it does wear really well. And if you're looking for something that has the anti-pollutant and anti-blue light ingredients, I mean, there you go. I feel like I kind of prefer the foundation over the concealer. It's kind of like, okay, you want to be a medium coverage foundation, fine. But if you're going to give me a medium coverage concealer to pair with it, let's try to go up a notch on the coverage the concealer gives. The loose powder is really nice. I think it's comparable to the experience I have with the Maybelline Fit Me. Every time I've worn the foundation, I have set it with this and I have had good staying power. It doesn't look too heavy or chalky on the skin and I love the little um, capping sealing mechanism in there. These LA Colors palettes, um, I have played with a couple eyeshadow palettes as well, which were just kind of meh. One of them, neutral, very basic. It's okay. It's not blowing my mind. The highlight and bronzer one to me is definitely not a must have. This shade here of bronzer is so shimmery, has a lot of reddish tone in it and I think that makes it not super versatile. I do enjoy this blush palette though. This is again the deeper of the two that are offered and the matte blush is pretty. You got a couple shimmery rich tones of blush and then this almost borderline highlighter blush. I do really like that. If you find that one called Getting Gorgeous, this is super nice. Our Rosé All Day kit from Hard Candy. First off, if I did do Rosé All Day, I would be asleep by lunchtime. Actually, speaking of Rosé, I got this Angry Orchard Rosé and it was really good. Pick up your Hard Candy kit and then snag you a six pack at Walmart. No, but this palette, I mean, there are some shades in here that frustrate me. So I know the feelings I was having when I tried the bigger version. By the way, every shade in this is also in the bigger one. But yet when you sort of figure out what makes them tick, I think a concealer base works amazingly for some of those shimmery shades. Also a finger application is pretty good for those. If I said I didn't love the finished look that I've gotten with this, I'd be lying. The colors do work together nicely. I really like the mattes. I like some of the shimmers that aren't so flaky but I mean just give them something to stick to and they will work for you. The primer is decent in that kit. I like this little highlight. I popped on a little extra of that. The lip color is fine. This metal glaze is something I've yet to really experiment with. This giant lip kit, I mean I feel like I've seen a few little inconsistencies within the cashmere silks but I do love the wet ever line. The velvet mousses are really pretty good too as far as staying power goes and just evenness of color on the lips. There are some ways to play down here and accent your look with sort of a lip topper idea. So so I do think it's a good buy. It's a nice way to sample a lot of different colors, but I wish they would have put more um, bright tones in their matte formula and maybe a few more nudes in the glossy formula. Just because some of these really rich colors, I'd feel a bit more comfortable wearing those in mattes. Just my two cents there. But guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for requesting this look that I busted out over the weekend. You don't have to spend a lot to get a super glam look. And if you've been seeing any other drugstore gift sets that you're intrigued about, definitely let me know in the comments section and I'll work those into an upcoming look. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. For this staying power check-in you maybe can't see but it's snowing outside. The little ladies are playing with my old Polly Pockets. Wave hi. Hi. Say hi everybody. Biddy, say hi. Hi. Just wanted to show you that everything is holding up quite well. I am not shiny by any means. I mean, my skin basically has the same sheen it had when I started. Um, my contacts were annoying me, so I did take those out and have had on my glasses for a lot of the day, but overall the makeup is holding up pretty well. I did notice when I was taking out my contacts that I had a little bit of um, kind of glittery fallout on the cheeks. It wasn't terrible. Eye look is still actually going pretty strong too, so lip faded a long time ago and definitely faded after those couple pieces of pizza I just had. But yeah, I just wanted to check in with you. We're at about 13 hours of wear at this point. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye.